Welcome to Douglas County. This is Commissioner Kelly Robinson for District 2. Welcome to District Dialogue. I've got a, a, a very good show that we've designed today to talk to you about sort of what's going on in this new year. By the time you see this, it'll be 2017, probably in the month of February. And so a couple of things have happened since then. And I want to bring you more in tune with what's going on with your local district office. Stay tuned, Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Be right back. Welcome back, District Dialogue viewers, Kelly Robinson. Um, again, this is 2017, and I want to wish everybody a, a great start to a new year. Um, there's a lot going on in Douglas County. Um, as you know, we just recently came through an election, um, and um, from both the federal to state and local levels. And there was a shift um, in, in the hearts and the minds of the people um, throughout our land, and in, even in Douglas County. And I'm excited about where we are as far as moving forward. Um, there's a couple of things that we want to talk about here on today's shows that are relevant to things that you're, you're, that's important to you. Um, obviously, if we talk about you know, a couple of words that come to mind, um, let's think about economic development. One of the things that we heard probably over the past few months is, okay, what about me? What about my backyard? What about my own pocketbook? How are you as a government advancing our agenda? I think that's a legitimate question that is um, consensus throughout the land uh, where there was some question. Uh, this is not intended to be political, but this is something that our citizens came to me um, and, and made it very clear on, okay, Commissioner Robinson, what are you doing, even in your power at the local level, to advance the economy? Okay? Not much I can do, per se, other than through the incentives I can use for monetary policy, taxes, and so forth, tax incentives, but nonetheless, it was legitimate. It was a legitimate question. And so let me, let me, let me tackle that right now. Let's talk about um, the economy and what we're doing here at a local level to sort of help uh, drive things forward. Recently, uh, this past election, uh, you, the voters, uh, voted for a, a SPLOS, Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax. And, and with that passage of that referendum, uh, the county, as well as jurisdictions, uh, municipalities that are associated with that, uh, we'll, um, we will levy, that meaning the county will level an extra one penny or one percent sales tax um, um, that will generate revenue for the county to do some capital projects. And capital projects can range from anything like transportation oriented, parks and rec, uh, public safety, um, I I even economic development. And they're all in essence focused on improving your quality of life. But let me just take the one called economic development, because that was the question that was at hand. Again, Commissioner Robinson, what are you doing for District 2 to spurn economic development? How will we feel this on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, with the passage of that SPLOS, what came out of it as part of that is that there was a $10 million that had been appropriated for economic development to be part of a stimulus. That $10 million is not geared toward giving that money directly to the economic development group and it grew their budget. It is targeted for infrastructure. Uh, we had uh, a similar project on the west side uh, a couple of years ago to spur some work on Caps Ferry uh, with a similar incentive. This one we're using a SPLOS as a mechanism to create that revenue versus the issuance of bonds through a private public partnership. Um, I believe this is a more efficient way to do that. And you voters, I do appreciate you giving us that opportunity to show in District 2 how that can be done. That $10 million will go strategically along the Thornton Road corridor, Riverside areas, what I call this L, it's a strategic triangle, um, even to a certain extent on Lee Road to figure out where can we apply this $10 million to stimulate growth, whether it's inter intersections rebuilding, whether it's some type of mixed use, a different type of grade of, um, of building, uh, we don't know yet. We're working on that right now based on what's coming down the pipe and the landowners, some of your landowners, who own this. So again, it's not just homeowners, it's also landowners that have a stake on growing the economy. But with that stimulus, it's intended to hopefully grow the local economy, right? If we give incentives, it's supposedly grow the local economy, um, it, you know, with both jobs, both with attraction of other businesses, to attract other citizens from other counties and also to keep our money locally. We'll see how that plays out. But again, that's how we're growing it locally. We're investing in our own infrastructure to move us forward. 
The second thing I want to talk about beyond that um, associated with this floss is it, 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 for District 2, as you said, and as you guys know, it wasn't just about roads, which is experienced in our tax dollars on a daily basis. It wasn't just about public safety. We understand that that is important, but it wasn't as high of a priority. Uh, there's also a quality of life that came down. Um, where you made it very clear that you wanted um, uh, an emphasis and an investment in parks and rec. What came out of that, and I, I, I do want to sort of acknowledge, and, and maybe this is a good point to do that, is acknowledge the Citizens Review Committee that actually came up with this idea of what was the priorities for our specific district. Let me just start off by thanking um, the following individuals. Mr. Mel Hughes, which served as the team lead for District 2. Mel, thank you very much. Uh, we have other members on the team as well. We have a Marcus Durr. Uh, we have a, a Cartez, and let me make sure I get this right, um, a, a Cartez um, Harris. We also have Lily Jackson, um, and we have um, a Pearl Smith. So let me thank all of you for participating in that process because without your input, um, this would not have worked as well as it did. In other words, this wasn't me as your District 2 Commissioner in an ivory tower making a decision on your behalf. This was you working this out on our behalf um, and, and making a recommendation to us. So again, to the um, Citizens Review Committee, thank you very much. So when it came forth to saying that Parks and Rec was important, you citizens decided that, yes, we need to put a certain percentage of money into Parks and Rec. For District 2, the idea of a youth center, a community center, was something that was very important that came out of our district. And we're allocating roughly about $11 million to build a new community center. Now, I know some of you have heard that we were thinking about knocking down Deer Lick and putting up a new one, and let me assure you, there's no way I would have supported that. We would not tear down an existing facility to put up a new one there. But nor did that where it originated from. It originated out of the Boundary Water area. And so therefore, I think I needed to support those people who put that forward as being something that needs to be put there. But also out of District 2 came this whole notion of a senior community center or some type of housing. Um, while I appreciate us being very innovative in our district, I also believe that all money should not have been necessarily concentrated with us, and I acquiesced that to allow that to be done um, in District 1, which we actually had land that we already own. So I believe in a fair distribution um, accordingly. Um, so again, District 2 was on the forefront of driving this BLOSS process, rightfully so. I advocated your voices and I want to thank you for your support. So if you think about that community center, uh, I think it is going to improve the quality of life on the south side. We've already got uh, Deer Lake. Um, it is a good park. Um, it is, uh, requires some type of renovation. We know we need to do the tennis courts, need to be rebuilt, um, not just resurfaced, but rebuilt. We know there's a lot of work that needs to go into um, um, Deer Lake, but nonetheless, uh, we, we know we dropped that animal shelter in there. Uh, we know that that should not be the preeminent building there, but we're going to make the improvements that are necessary to continue to make that park important, but we're also going to fulfill what we committed to down in Boundary Waters. So you, you've got a little park and rec, we've got a little economic development as far as quality of life, but, but what else is coming? What else do, do, do I think is missing? Um, I, I think at the end of the day, um, though transportation is important, independent of the spots for District 2 is that Transportation by way of public transportation is something that I cannot forsake. Um, I think it's something that is very, very important. We do a great job of focusing on what I want to call getting people from Douglas County over into the Atlanta metropolitan area, uh, be it at the airport, be it Home Depot, downtown, midtown, up to Norcross, where we call these strategic workplace areas. I think we do an excellent job at that. I think we do an excellent job, and for you guys who operate as van pool drivers or carpool drivers, I think we do a great job of moving people outside of the county. But there's a lot of you who pay taxes um, that need mobility within the county. And I think that's something that we're going to continue to focus on to improve your quality of life. That's how we grow the economy. Because what happens is that we have people who work in District 2 along Thornton Road, they can't get to their jobs for whatever reason. Everybody doesn't have to drive. There is no law on the, on the land that says you must drive. Remember, driving is it, it's really just, it's a privilege. It's not an entitlement, right? So being able to be, but you are able to be, be able to be mobile, and I think that's something that we should take a look at. But I want to drive home this whole point that right now, the county already has money. They have a grant that's been dedicated to um, acquire the capital equipment for a bus system, right? 
we're two years into that process. I know there were some recent conversations about, you know, it could take two more years. I would say that that is unacceptable. I think it's something that can be realized in its current year to get a pilot program going, and you're going to continue to hear me advocate to push forward on that. If we've already got money from the feds for that, the last thing we want to be is not moving on what's important that we've already been given um, access to. So we've got that we've got to deal with. We, we know we have a plan. We have the routes. We know how many people it's going to take to get this done. It's just the will to say, go do this. Now, it may require some restructuring in light of the SPLOS that's coming down. We know that we have pretty much stretched our people um, to capacity, and, and they will be pretty soon. So we do recognize that there may be need, the need to add resources to make this work. That is the right thing to do, and I want to unequivocally support staff's recommendations to sort of do whatever is necessary to fill the promise of transportation. So we talked about that. So I, I talked about three things there, pretty, pretty rapid fire, economic development. Uh, I talked a little bit about transportation and parks and rec, but I'm going to take a pause right now and come right back because I want to close out with something that I think is near and dear to all of you at the end of the day. Stay tuned, District Dialogue. Welcome back, District Dialogue, District 2, Commissioner Kelly Robinson. I want to pick back up where I just left off at. There was four things I was talking about associated with the recent passage of the 2016 SPLOST. Um, economic development, transportation, public safety, and um, um, what we call parks and rec. And, and I'm, my intent was not to go too deep into that. It was just to give you a little insight on what the priorities are. Because you've got to think about it, for example, our current transportation budget is probably about a million to two million dollars in what we want to call resurfacing, another million or two million dollars in just sort of overhead and so forth. So let's just say it's five million. But yet we just, you, the voters, passed $110 million lost. Um, roughly 51% of that is transportation. So 51% of roughly 100 million is about 50 million. We're about to drop 5x on top of our transportation group. Um, in projects. Yes, most of it will be outsourced for the most part. No, we're not trying to absorb it, but nonetheless that gives you the magnitude of what we're embarking on. It's that important. Um, SPLOS are important financing tools for local governments. Um, you know, it's, it, you know, in the past eight years it's hard for us coming out of the recession to really think about, even though we did a SPLOS, for you really to fill it. I mean, think about it. We spent about $120 million on a jail, but yet did you really fill it? Right? It was the illusion that it was making us safe, but we know it was after the fact. Right? But if you think about it, we spent $120 million on a single SPLOS project that no one else benefited from, no municipalities, but yet was life made any safer? We made 800 people comfortable. Yes, we made uh, uh, a constitutional officer comfortable, but did we really advance the agenda on behalf of the public of making them safe with that? And I would answer it would be not necessarily. But nonetheless, now, taking that concept, 800 people versus 140,000, and we're taking that 120 million that we gave to one group, and we're gonna take a little bit less than that because we have to share this loss, and now we're gonna spread it across 140,000. I think now you're gonna be really able to feel the effects of what local government can do for you because you're gonna experience it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I'm gonna let that go. We, we, I think you get the SPLOS. Um, obviously, guys, stay tuned to what we're gonna be doing. Stay closely monitoring some of the information we're gonna be putting out. We're going to go on our website, CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. You'll be able to go somewhere on there on the home page and click on SPLOS status, and um, you'll see more information on where that's going to be coming out. Uh, the next thing I want to sort of shift to is talk a little bit about what's, what's close to you. Like, what is the end game? You know, at the end game, you guys, uh, for most of us, either we inherited property, we grew up here, we moved here, but nonetheless, it's all about our home. And um, if we acquired property, we want our housing values to grow. If we own property, we don't necessarily we have to live in it. Uh, we want that as an asset to grow. And I think housing is the last thing that I hope to affect um, on your behalf. I know there's a housing study that just was completed in addition to the economic development study, in addition to the transportation study. Uh, yes, we, we've studied things out. But we need to understand what is the lay of the land. And I think as we continue to lay down an infrastructure to suggest to businesses that, look, we're a place worth coming and investing in, hopefully we'll be again to attract people here 
um, that will move here and increase the values in our properties. Um, just tinkering with our, um, our assessors and, and, and obviously um, reassessing values is um, it, it's sort of artificial inflation. And um, you know my background is just, okay, that's really not, mm, I want the market to drive it, not someone in the department that reassesses and we get um, obviously growth that way. I, I want real net growth through new homes um, or purchases out there on the market, on marketplace. But housing values are going to be important to us. And you guys have let me know, as your district commissioner, you're concerned about values. Um, you know directly that we don't affect it. Um, uh, we, we affect it indirectly, but not directly. We know that but at least if we can set the atmosphere and beautify the place and resurface the roads, that will make it more attractive for people to, to warrant the prices that they want to sell their home or justify the, the buying price for people who want to buy a home. I think housing is something that's going to set the tone for Douglas County. That is, that is going to be the one thing that's going to mark us as being a preeminent place to live. It's going to be our houses, our values. Yes, the school is important. It's very important. Um, yes, our, 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 um, how we handle constitutional officers and how they execute is important, but, but at the end of the day, it's about our houses. And so um, I got a question from one citizen, and I want to make sure I get this right, which is, uh, again, it always comes back to this, closure, this, this conversation is about um, um, foreclosures. And the question was, Commissioner Robinson, this should be up on the screen, Commissioner Robinson, how will you guys handle foreclosures in the future? How can you stop um, from our, our houses being sold on the courthouse steps? Good question. Uh, very good question. Um, you know, obviously uh, foreclosures is a private matter. Let us start there. Uh, that is a contract between um, the homeowner and the mortgage company or um, whoever the person that has your contract. It might have been a, a lease. It could be whatever the case may be. Uh, it could be a actually purchase. But that is, at, at, at first and foremost, that is a private matter. Um, I, I think the question becomes, is there something that we can do to um, allow, is there some type of program that's in place that can be ac um, accessed through local government that help people uh, avoid foreclosures? Um, right now, Douglas County does not have a foreclosure prevention um, grant or anything like that available to help with that, not at this time, nor do we have um, um, anything um, at, uh, that would allow um, um, direct access to that through um, some type of um, proceedings that we could do from our side, which is obviously the Board of Commissioners. So to answer the question is that there's not much we could do. As a local commissioner, though, I do encourage um, those um, nonprofits that are out there, um, those ministries that are out there that, that are dedicated to helping people deal with foreclosure prevention through some type of what we call intervention or prevention programs, where they may have some type of utility support or mortgage support. Um, so my job as an elected official is to be aware of those programs and to triage on your behalf and sort of make suggestions on where you perhaps could go to get access for support. Now we know that goes two ways. It's not just an ongoing program because obviously um, dollars are limited. But there are one-time um, interventions to sort of just stop the bleeding, right? It's sort of that emergency, let's just, let's just stop things. Um, and, and let stability come over time. So to answer the question from the citizen from District 2, um, there's nothing formally that we have by way of direct money access, but as it relates to um, pointing to access out in the community, in addition to United Way and some of the other ministries and nonprofits that are out there, and even some private citizens who do help people in needs, um, my office is available. If you want to access me, I'll be glad to um, point you to um, those um, um, programs that are out there that perhaps can assist you. Um, I want to come back with my closing comments on District 2 um, um, in this district dialogue. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome back, District Dialogue. Commissioner Kelly Robinson, District 2. I just want to come out and, and sort of with my closing comments on where we are in the county. Um, as you know, through this particular segment, I, I just want to hit. The, the highlights right now. Um, what, what you heard is that there's a lot of planning that's going on, but in addition to those synchronization of this bigger picture, there's a lot of work that's on the table. I mean, it's just not business as usual. We have a commitment as elected officials to deliver what we, we promised that we would do for you. If you gave us approval 
um, on a SPLOS, if you gave us permission to move forward on certain initiatives, uh, it's our job and we're, it, we're beholden to you to fulfill that. And so right now, I'm excited about what we're looking at um, uh, to move the county forward. Um, over this, I can say for the next four years, it's going to be a time such as you should directly see the benefit of what you approved. And I am here to be, your, uh, be the governor and give oversight to that which you sort of sent me down here to do. But that being said, um, again, stay tuned. There, there, there were obviously in this, this new era, this new administration, there's, there's um, um, change in the air. Uh, there's going to be new looks coming down, um, new fields, new buildings, new people. Uh, it, it's just, it, it's time for growth. It's time for opportunity for, for, for change and um, evolving. And I'm just really excited about Douglas County. Um, I'm excited about being part of it. I'm excited that you've given me this chance to represent you as your district commissioner. But, but, but make no mistake about it. I am here for you to fulfill what you sent me here to do. Um, and if you have any questions or anything like that, please give me a call. Again, my name is Commissioner Kelly Robinson. I'm going to go ahead and yield now back to your evening. Thank you and good night.